Right, let's uh, carry on now. Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zonda earlier this week slammed uh, Tourism Minister Lindy Wesisulu for her controversial article in which she attacked the country's constitution and judiciary. Addressing a media briefing, Zondo said the article is an insult to all black judges. In the article published in IOL, Sisulu questioned the moral standing of the country's judges. Meanwhile, Sisulu has responded to Justice Minister Ronald Namula's open letter saying he has taken an unusual step of addressing her in an open letter, something unheard of in the tradition of our movement. Now, let's unpack this and other political uh, issues that are on the forefront at the moment with political analyst Rebone Dau. Rebone, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I mean... Plenty to unpack here. First, we saw uh, Minister Lindiwe uh, Sisulu writing that open letter, essentially uh, attacking, you know, the judiciary and the constitution. We also saw the uh, acting chief justice then responding, you know, to that. And now she's responded to the justice uh, minister. What? What can we make of what is playing out now publicly, particularly given that these are senior members within, you know, um, the executive, senior members within within Parliament? Good afternoon, Nigel. Good afternoon to the viewers at home. Unfortunately, we need to also remember that this is the year of the ANC conference, which you all know that it normally takes place in December. And as, as things stand, and we can go back to the January 8th statement this year, something that was done by Stan Machaba to the chairperson of the ANC has never be da been done in the history of the ANC because the January 8th statement is a, sta is, a, is, a, is a statement of the national executive to its members and to the country to say these are the plans. But Stan Machaba then decided to pronounce uh, the current president for second term as the NC prepares to, for this conference, which one also was disappointed by President Ramaphosa that when he took podium, he did not condemn what Stephen Matabati did. And this also now, after what Stephen Matabati did, we saw the letter by Lindu uh, uh, who's a National Executive Committee member. We saw now recently uh, a letter by also uh, uh, Ronald Ramula, who's also a National Executive Committee member of the NC. These are comrades who are serving in the same structure out, outside of serving in the same cabinet. And we know that Lindwe Sisulu, over the past few years, has been seen to be flirting with what we call in the NC the, reg, uh, the radical economic transformation faction, which is part of the Zuma faction, or you can say the Isma Khashul faction. And we know that Lamula is linked to the CR17 faction. So this is just what we're going to see, which is also a bit worrying that it shows that this process of this conference started too early because that means between now and December, there will not be any work in government because the battle lines are drawn by factions that also serve in the same cabinet. Battle lines are drawn, as you say, but to attack the Constitution? I mean, uh, you know, some analysts saying, of course, this is uh, not e exactly smart of Lindy Wesisulu uh, for somebody in her standing to be attacking the Constitution at a moment where her party is uh, losing so much support and is not essentially uh, in, the, in, in, in power as, as it was. And so to attack a constitution where when the ANC was actually in power with the th uh, two-thirds majority, they could have, in fact, as a party, implemented some changes uh, within that constitution. The right of the matter, you're correctly putting the NCA to that maturity term at some point, could have uh, amended Article 25. Mm -hmm. We know that the EFF for the longest time has been to send to the NC. If you're going to move with us, we'll also support you on the Article 25 in terms of um, amending it, because the issue is the issue of the land. Now, whether wrong or right, and I'm not a legal expert, but I've even went further myself to engage with those in the legal uh, field, you know, to ask them to say, in terms of the transformation, and, 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 and one of the things is that there are challenges within the judiciary. The constitution itself, today, 27 years into democracy, the land still belongs to the few. There is no political will from the ANC uh, to make sure that the economy of this country is equal, the, the field is equal, across all racial issues because the right of the matter, a lot of people are, are, are poor. 
and 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 the land, as I say, still belongs to the few. Um, not much has been done been done in terms of the distribution distribution of the land because you can go back to the freedom charter. Freedom chart it says the land belongs to all those that live in it. But who who does this land belongs? Because the majority of these people still don't have the land. But the question is that what I'm saying that with Linda was uh, um, opinion piece around this, my problem is that it's the language. But let's remove the language. Let's speak about the challenges. Are we saying that that uh, we can't engage on the judiciary and criticize the judiciary uh, because we can uh, criticize parliament, we can criticize the executive, but the judiciary, we should also look at some of the things. Uh, post-1994, uh, how far have we, have we gone in terms of the judiciary and also transforming it? Because, yes, you might have young black lawyers, um, judges who are appointed, but in terms of, is it all just an issue of numbers? But you look at the caliber of some of the judges that have been appointed over the years, it's a bit concerning. And this has been said by some who are in the legal uh, field that I've engaged with. But uh, also what is surprising, in everything that we're seeing, we're not seeing legal people from law firms uh, really coming out and speaking on some of these challenges, uh, looking at the constitution and the judiciary on its own. But then again, the question is also the language in which, uh, you know, the minister had uh, penned her open letter. You know, the language not only questioning the standing of the constitution and whether it had done enough to, you know, address the socioeconomic issues faced by the, the, the country, but also an attack to what acting chief justice calls uh, uh, an insult to African judges. Was this the right platform for her to have taken? Or is this uh, a sign of the times that are coming in the coming uh, months uh, as we head to uh, the elective conference uh, in December? Is this, uh, you know, a play of words? Uh, is she playing to the gallery? Could she not have taken a different stance and a different way to approach this? Let me first start by saying she's not the first member within the ANC to actually criticize the judiciary. Mm. We can go back to 2015 when Gwede Mandashi made uh, remarks, you know, about uh, courts being anti-revolutionary, and uh, we, uh, we remember how also um, uh, the then Chief Justice retired Mokhoi Mokhoi responded to that. So it, 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 it seems like it's a common thing within the ANC that uh, some of these leaders now and then will uh, speak out on this. But the right of the matter, correctly as you put it, um, it's, it's a conference here. Yeah? And, and, and one thing I've been saying to a lot of people that you must remember that the RT faction does not have a candidate as things stand. The Secretary General is Mahashule, who is in the RT faction, has been suspended. Uh, no one knows who's going to contest uh, uh, President Ramaphosa as he seems like he's going for his second term. So obviously, we know that we can go back to 2017. Lindwe Sisulu had ambitions. She was available already in 2017 to become the president of the ANC. So it is clear that she is now making sure that she's positioning herself. And when you look at the language that she's using, it is not far from the RT faction, the language that we have seen others in the RT faction using in the public domain. So probably she's trying to position herself so that within the RT, when they start to look around and say, but guys, time is going, it's not on our side. Who do we then? Then she'll become, she'll be seen as one of the brave people within the RT. And especially for the mere fact that she's a cabinet member who is now seen to be uh, speaking out on some of these things, while other cabinet members are not seen to be publicly speaking on certain things. We don't know their politics. Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, you know, the faction and the different um, uh, sections uh, within within the the ANC. Let's now have a conversation about this um, succession uh, debate, as as it were, uh, within the party. We already know that. Um, the highly contested uh, secretary general position is now, you know, at the front and center already people throwing some names in the ring, uh, including David Makura, Deputy President David Mabuza. Talk to us about what we are likely to see in the run up to the conference. I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, conference and I think it will be more interesting um, based on the fact that we thought Polokwane was watershed. I don't think that I uh, think that Pulukwane, when we reflect, we'll say it was a walk in the park. Why I say this is because we are going to a conference where a lot has happened, and especially around uh, Jacob Zuma, you know, and the other faction feels that, uh, that which is the RT, that uh, the, the CR faction has sold out Zuma to the highest bidder. So the battle lines are drawn from there. But what is more interesting that we are going to a conference where 
the Secretary General and the President are not, go, are not getting along. And this is in their first term. You can go back to Polokwane when Khalima decided to work with Jacob Zuma. That was uh, the, uh, 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 an era where Tabumbeki wanted to, set, to, to contest the third, for third term. That's why he knew that Tabumbeki will not become the president of the republic based on the constitution of, this, of the country. So strategically, he then worked with Jacob Zuma in 27. You go back to the 2012 conference of the ANC, where Mantashe was working with uh, Jacob Zuma. It's only uh, in 2017 when he knew that Jacob Zuma is not coming back as the president of the republic. So now, with, with this time around, the battle lines have been drawn since day one of Nazareth. We can go back to as far as an event that took place of the NC early 2018 in KZN when Isma Khashula said five years is not a long time. Indeed, we are now uh, uh, close to the five years term of the, 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 the mandate ending in December. But you are seeing now people who have got ambitions mm. to contest for the position of deputy president, uh, SG, DSG, national chair, and TG. Uh, and, 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 and now that means that the Ramaphosa will come with different names for this conference going to, uh, to Nazareth, uh, to, to, not, to, the, to December, because of now, he was not, it seems like he will not retain some of the officials that he's serving with uh, in, 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 in this current executive, national executive committee. Because conference also is a game of numbers. It's about who's going to bring which number. You go to Mpumalanga, over the past few months, there's been challenges in Mpumalanga. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Didi Mabuza left that province in 2017 when he was elected at, as, the, as the deputy president of, of the ANC. Up to now, Mpumalanga still has an acting chair five years later. And every time when Mpumalanga prepares to go to the conferences, there's always casualties, people are dying. So that shows that that province is really struggling politically. We know that even the name of Musen Mpumalanga from KZN has been coming up, that some prefer him to be the next secretary general of the ANC based on uh, the, the posture that they've seen that he's been taking in Mpumalanga. And then also there's an the issue of that there should be young people uh, who should also contest in the officials, the name of Roman, Ronald Lamola uh, is coming up. So it's not surprising to also see Ronald Lamola responding to Lindo Sisulu because his name is also mentioned within the ANC circles that probably it's now the time that he should also be in the top in the top six. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, 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 era, but also to see the RT if they don't have a presidential candidate who is also going to be in that top six slate as things that no one knows with the RT. But the names are, are, that are coming up are those that are in the CR, CR22 faction, as they call themselves. It is no longer CR17. But now it's the issue of who's going to work the ground to get the numbers, to make sure that the numbers, uh, uh, when they went bargain with the different provinces. Interesting indeed. And as you mentioned that Ronald Lamula's name was mentioned, we also know, in fact, that Lindy Wesley Sulu's name has also been put forward, uh, particularly by the Free State uh, province. Uh, I mean, as you and I speak now, the... Um KZN uh, Provincial ANC is currently hosting its 110th year you know, anniversary in, in Umgeni. And also, uh, as we know, in that province, several names have also come up. Talk to us about that province in particular very quickly as we wrap up this, uh, this um, conversation in terms of what are the interesting names that we will see being put up there um, as we head into this conference and essentially for that top six position that you mentioned earlier. <laughs> The names that we'll see coming up, you know, because Kizetan has also got their own, their own challenges mm. uh, provincially, and it's also linked to the Zuma factor, because obviously it's from Kizetan. And some have been saying that the current PEC have sold out uh, Jacob Zuma in the province. We've seen when Zuma appears in court, how even uh, members of the of, of, of branches of the ANC that will go to support Jacob Zuma, how they will respond to the likes of Sitle Zigalala, uh, uh, telling them how they've sold out but what is interesting, the name of Zolim Kize seems to also be coming up that uh, he might also be available. You know, uh, I saw uh, recently also uh, the name of Senzo Mtunu also circulating. And you must remember that Senzo Mtunu, he was in the CR17 slate for the position of Secretary General. He lost to Isma Khashule in 2017. So those are the two names, three names, uh, Senzo Mtunu, uh, um, and um, and 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 Zolim Kiza that uh, as things stand have, have been coming up. 
and obviously uh, the famous one is the branch chair of Etegu, one of the branches in Etegu, uh, who has got uh, ambitions. His name has been coming up to Tuzan Zuma, but obviously he's not a factor in the political landscape. I like that smile at the end there when you mentioned his name. Uh, Ribone, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your analysis, Ribone Dao, uh, political analyst. They're just unpacking various uh, you know, issues as it relates to the ANC, particularly, of course, uh, uh, Lindy Wessesulu's response now to Justice Minister regarding her original open letter. Let's continue.